There we go. Good morning, my friends. Welcome to the Needle Bug. My name is Karen, and I am the Needle Bug. This is a channel about cross stitch and where I share my stitching and do stitch with me's. So if you just found my channel, welcome. And I'm so very happy to have you come aboard. And if you see something that you like, please hit the subscribe button and come back again. If you're returning, thank you so, so very, very much. I really appreciate all of you and all of you coming back to spend some stitchy time with me and see what we've been working on and uh, learning some new tips and techniques and spending some time. And I do appreciate you allowing me to come into your home today to have a little bit of a visit. What's on the agenda for today is to show you what I've been working on the past few weeks. Um, it's been a little bit of, of time since I recorded, and I'll explain that in a minute. And after that, I think what we're going to do is a little bit of stitching together. Um, I have a new start. I've been itching to start. And when we start that, I will explain why. So before we begin, let me preface this video with um, a little bit of technology problems have been going on. Uh, my laptop seems to uh, drain the battery, even though it's plugged into power. And when it drains the battery, this is the problem I've been trying to fix. When it drains the battery, what happens is it cuts off my recording software. And I just suddenly go, bye-bye, you're not there anymore. Um, or I'm not here anymore. It just cuts it off wherever I'm at. And it's this abrupt ending to whatever I'm recording. So just a heads up, if that happens, it's my laptop and I hope that it doesn't, but we're going to give it a shot today and, and see where we go from here. Um, I'm hoping that I have it resolved because I'm not really in the market for a new laptop at the moment. But if that's what I have to do, then that's what I have to do because in all honesty, I don't want to stop making videos. I want to keep on going with videos and doing stitch with me's and all of that wonderful things that we do together. So with that, let's look at what I've been stitching on. So today, let me find some pictures here. First one I'm going to show you is oh my goodness, Death by Cross Stitch. Ah, there we go. Um, Death by Cross Stitch. And this is what it looks like finished. So you can, oops, you can see it over here. <laughs> oh, I'll never get this right. I, <laughs> I'm a backwards Nelly, what can I say? And this is where I was the last time you saw it. Let me make that a little bigger for you. There you go. I really haven't worked on this too much, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and we'll talk about the rabbit hole I fell down in a little bit. So this is where I was the last time. And there we go. This is where, oops, one at a time here. This is where I am now. So as you can see, I really haven't done too much on this. In fact, I think the only thing I've done is over in here, this little bit of that diamond. And I did that on the last live stitch with me that we had. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't touched it since. I really haven't. Um, I don't know. 
I, 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 I just haven't touched it since. It's not one, I have to be in the mood for it, and it's not one that I pick up all that often. So that's Death by Cross Stitch. Uh, next one. Okay, let me, let me switch here. Okay, the next one that we worked on was in the library. And that's what it looks like finished. And, oops, wrong one. No, that's right. This is what it looked like the last time you saw it. So I did get a fair amount, a fair amount done on this. Um, yeah. To be honest, as much as I loved it when I first got it, I'm, I'm a little bit falling out of love with it. Not that I don't want to finish it, because I certainly do, but it's, it's, I end up not quite picking it up as often as I should. But as you can see, we got a fair bit done. Okay, that was done before. So we finished, I finished, um, okay, all right, here we go. I finished in here, okay, that part of the bookcase. And I'm working over in, i got to get the right finger here. I'm working over in here and gradually filling that in. So this has been one that I've, I picked it up fairly often. Uh, and we're, we're making some, some decent progress on it, uh, as you can see. So that's in the library. And I have been rotating, so that's partly why it's not as much progress as when it was, oh, like when I did Stitcher's Retreat, and that's all I worked on. Didn't work on anything else. So it was you know, not even worth doing a lot of progress videos because it was just one thing to show you. Um, and the last one that I have worked on is here we go once upon a time and if you remember this is the one that i'm stitching for my daughter uh, she doesn't know it but or i think maybe she does know it uh, but it's been so long since we talked about it she's probably totally forgotten about it by now <laughs> so that's what it will look like when it's finished and this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. Let's get it over here. So I think that's what it, I, I think I might've put the wrong picture because, boy, let's see if we can get it in here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I worked more where the needle is over on that side. I filled in more in there. So you can see where I'm, I'm getting down closer to the lettering and filled in a lot more of that. And then when filled in a little bit more of the, the um, solid area. And now I can see it on here. When I was stitching... I don't notice it for in real life, but I notice it. I'm noticing it. Oh, let me get the light in here. And maybe it's just the light. I was kind of thinking maybe, maybe, maybe. It's hard to see, but maybe I used the wrong color. And like I said, it's a little... more behind it there. Uh, 
Uh, maybe not. But it's a little hard to see. And uh, my light is not all. Uh, okay, I got light coming in the side window. And that's that's messing it up, but it looks a little bit different there that I might have used the wrong color, but yet when I look at it in real life, it looks okay. So I'm thinking maybe I'm just going to let it be whatever it is. Um, I don't know that I want to rip out all of that. So, a little bit of the rabbit hole that I fell down, and um, yeah, I can't even show you, but I started knitting a pair of socks, and I don't even think I can put a picture in. Let me see if I can find a note. Sorry about that. Um, I should have found a picture and, and maybe put it in, but it was a pair of socks and I was knitting them two at a time on two circular needles and I finished them and I bound them off. <laughs> And I should know better because I have a tendency when I bind off any knitting, I have a tendency to do it too tight. Which is exactly what I did on these socks. Now, I knit them from the toe up. So if I would have been closing them by a Kitchener, I think that's how you say it, a Kitchener stitch at the toe would not have been a problem. However, I did them toe up. So what I was binding off was the cuff. And guess what? I bound it off too tight. I went to put it on or put them on to see how they fit. <laughs> I couldn't even open the cuff enough to get them over my foot. I could get them past my toes, but I could not get them past the ball of my foot. That's how tight I bound them off. <laughs> and then I started really looking. Because, you know, and, and this was always a problem for me when I did socks on... Uh, CPNs, double pointed needles. But I thought I could resolve that issue by doing them on two circular needles. However, it didn't. And right where that, I guess you call it a join, where you switch from one needle to the other, I had big spaces. And you know, when I was knitting them, I, you know, they were sort of noticeable, but once they were done, they were, I, I, it was too much that it really, really bothered me. And there were places on the heel where I had gaps and it's like, well, you guys know me. I, I, I just was not happy with them. So as a result, <laughs> and which is why I don't have anything to show you. I ripped them both out to nothing and will be starting over if I decide that that's a rabbit hole that I want to go down. I kind of feeling like I scratched the itch and I don't know that I want to continue going down that rabbit hole. And maybe I will pick it up every once in a while, but it's, I, I, I like to knit. I have I've told you guys all before I started knitting at a, 
a very, very young age. And I, I told you the story of how my first experience with knitting was that my mom had to cut the, the stitches off the needle because I had them on so tight and you, she even she couldn't move them. So I think I was oh, maybe six, at best seven years old at that point in time. So I've been knitting off and on for for many, many years. And, you know, it's something that I get the urge to do every now and again, and then I scratch the urge, and then I don't touch it again for years and years and years. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a shot. And if I do, if I do go to knit them again, it will definitely be on the nine inch circular needles. Um, I had done socks on them before and was much happier with the finished product from a nine inch circular needle. Uh, the only thing that kind of gave me trouble and I guess I got to find some some YouTube videos because geez you learn everything on YouTube um, is how to do that toe on a nine inch circular or if you have to take them off of that how do you finish the toe so that's that would be my biggest challenge if I would go back to knitting socks so I don't know if I'm gonna or if I'm not gonna so that was my rabbit hole and that took up a bit more time that cut into my stitching time the past couple of weeks um, what can I say what can I say so here's my other thought I'm gonna start a project today and the reason I'm going to do a new start is because most of my projects at this point in time are, they're very dark colors. Okay, so in the library, except for the blue dress, let's put her up here. except for the blue dress and a little bit around the bookcase, she's pretty much dark colors, okay? All the books are dark colors, browns and grays and 902 and more browns and grays. And, and you know, and, and, and it's a beautiful picture, don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. And I do love the picture. I'm just kind of at a point of where I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of stitching with dark colors all the time. I don't know. It, it's winter's coming. All these dark colors get kind of depressing. So, I mean, she's still in the rotation. Don't get me wrong. She's still in the rotation. Okay. Um, once upon a time, isn't all dark colors. This is a lot of bright or cream, white, light color, except for the lettering. However, it's such big blocks of color that at times it gets kind of boring. So, yes, this one will remain in the rotation. I'm not giving up on this one because, like I said, I want to I wanna do this one for my kittle, who's not such a little kittle anymore, but uh, this one is going to be for her. So I don't want to give up on this one. I still do want to stitch it. And this will continue to be in the rotation. So I don't know that I have pictures on here anymore. Um, spread your wings. And I don't have a picture on here anymore of that one. I don't think.
no, I took them, I took them off. Um, that one, and that's the girl standing, looking out, like on a mountaintop, looking out at the sky. That one is definitely all dark colors and grays and browns and more grays and more browns. And again, very dark, very dark not going to be in the rotation at this given moment. Um, and like I said before, Death by Cross Stitch, although I do like it, and although it is uh, one color stitching and can go very quickly. Um, another one that doesn't call to me to stitch on it all that often. And neither does Pandemic. Doesn't call to me all that often. So they're kind of not, not given up on, but kind of sitting in the wings. And, you know, maybe they will get pulled out from time to time. But right now they're not high on my list of want to do's. So I went looking for something <laughs> that was going to call to me and really want to stitch on. And you know, I talked before about st the pieces I had stitched back in the 80s by uh, designs by Barbara and Cheryl, which were a lot of houses. So that's still one of the things I like to stitch the best is houses. I know, I'm weird. A lot of people don't like houses, but what can I say? I'm weird. I like houses, and I like to stitch houses. So I went looking, and of course, um, when you talk about houses, and you talk about uh, not having browns, and grays, and blacks, uh, Charts by Dominic Davidson seem to crop up in my mind, being some of the first ones that, that I look at. So, by comparing and looking at, okay, looking at size, because we all know that it's going to be something that, you know, the size is going to be huge and comparing the size of the regular format with the minis, I was finding that I liked what I saw in the regular format better than the mini format. And some of them that had a lot of flowers and gardens and what have you in the mini format looked like in order to achieve that, it was going to be, pardon my French, confetti hell. So the one I leaned towards and the one I finally decided in the end, let me, oh, Karen, you did put it on here, didn't you? No, that's not it. Okay, let me find it. was ah, okay why is all my technology giving me fits 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 was There we go. Sorry for all that black part there, but it's um, there we go. English Garden, 
by Dominic Davidson, and it's a house. And yes, up here in the sky, um, it will be a lot of solid stitching. However, once you get, once I get down into here, um, Okay, what the heck? <laughs> All right, let me go back here. Oh my goodness, let's get rid of this. Okay, oh my goodness. <laughs> I told you I'm technology impaired here. Ah, uh, some days, some days, what can I say? So, that is what I decided to start. And I thought we'd have a little bit of a stitch with me today and I would get started on this. Now, here's my question. I know a lot of us have watched, um, I'm not sure if I pronounce her name right, Kamari. Mary. She's the one that is stitching um, Once Upon a Fairy Tale. And she does live streams on that. Uh, she hasn't done, I mean, she did a little bit of one just the other day, but she also has been having some trouble with her camera. So her message on there, and I did message her, uh, is that once she gets her camera straightened out, she will go back to live streaming more of her stitching on Once Upon a Fairy Tale. So, I had a thought of what do you think if I live stream my stitching on English Garden? Uh, I, I would work on it more than just a live stream, but if I did live streams more often on stitching with that, stitching on that, uh, kind of similar to what Kamari does. Um, so let me know your thoughts. It was just something I was thinking about, and, you know, I enjoy doing the live streams. I don't know that with all of them, I would do, I would have the comments going. I don't know if we'd have a live interaction, but I would do live stitching on some of them and maybe put some music in the background and turn off commenting because depending on where you are in the picture to try and keep up with comments and try and keep up with the stitching and and what you're doing there gets really in all honesty it gets really difficult to read comments and to stitch at the same time and I know um, the other one I know of that does, I, I don't think she does lives, but I think she does a lot of stitch with me, is Needle Ninja. And I don't know that she does a lot of live with her stitching, but I know a lot of you uh, watch her and enjoy her. And the other one, and I know she does more lives than just recording is Stitchy Witch, Carla. So I was thinking of joining that group of people and do some similar type things to what they do. Some where we have live and comments, some maybe where there's live, no comments and just music, 
and take it from there. So let me know what you think. I know a lot of you like when I talk. And, and that's fabulous and wonderful, and I really appreciate that. Uh, in all honesty, sometimes I just run out of things to talk about. Um, <laughs> I always say my husband and I are Mr. and Mrs. No Life. You know, we, we basically are homebodies. Um, he does a lot of reading. You know, his, his, his life is pretty much sitting at the kitchen counter reading. I mean, he has COPD, so um, he has to be careful what he does and when he does because it affects his breathing so much. Um, and of course, you all know I'm the crafty one and I do spend most of the day doing my stitching. Um, so let me know what you think. That's kind of my thoughts of what direction we'd like to go, or I'd like to go. I will say that there will be live videos this weekend as uh, the opportunity has arisen for me to be able to do lives and be able to do them for an extended period of time and just not a limited period of time. So you can look for those. Um, I'm going to try and scatter them throughout the weekend so that I can catch people in all parts of the world. Um, not just the United States. I know Australia's time is quite different from, yeah, I, I forget the time difference, but I do know that more recording in the evening for me gets more daytime hours for them. Uh, I know people in the United Kingdom are like five hours different from me. So, you know, if I'm recording at one o'clock, say in the afternoon, it's like six, six o'clock in the evening for them. So I will try and scatter it or keep the length that we can have more people coming in and out. Like I said, this weekend is providing a great opportunity for me to be able to do that. Um, the problem will be, can I find things to talk about for those amounts of time? So join me and, you know, let's have some good conversations of uh, what's going on and stitching and all that good stuff. So with that, let me um, get set up for some stitching. And let's see, we're at almost 35 minutes at this point in time. So let me get set up for some stitching and we'll do about another half, at least another half hour of uh, stitch with me and see how that goes. So hang in there and I will be, let me get the right screen here. Okay, you might hear a little bit of bumping around here until I get things um, where they need to be. In fact, I think I probably have to... What's my first color that I want? A27, okay. So... I think I have some thread ready. And we'll cut some loops here. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, let's see. There we go. There we go. Okay, I gotta set you up a little bit here. There we are. And look at that. This is going to be an easy one to start because guess what? It's all the same color. I'm going to do this one on the diagonal. And I'm going to put on a little light here. Hark. We can see. Uh, do we need to focus this just a Oh, pardon me. We need to focus this just a little bit better. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so this is a good time to start something because it's all one color and oh, I really made them long, didn't I? Okay, I am going to stitch on the diagonal. Um, what I am going to do, however, is feather a bit. Um, let me get my spectacles here so I can see. Okay. Um, have any of you, I can't remember her last name, but have any of you watched, is it Gemma? I believe. And, ugh, and the way she stitches on the diagonal, I found that rather rather interesting and it's a little it would be oh for heaven's sake her method would be a little hard to show you at this point in time because of the fact that this is just all solid at in these first couple blocks um, but she stitches on the diagonal but she doesn't go row by row she she um, goes by the colors and makes sure she doesn't box anything in or yeah but she kind of just picks her col what color she's going to stitch on what makes sense to her. So it's, it's interesting to watch. Um, I can't remember her last name. She has put videos on... <laughs> I want to say, is it full coverage fanatics where she's posted links to her videos? I can't, I can't remember. It's either there. It must be there. It, it's not the heaven and earth group because you're not allowed to post, to post links there. Um, but her technique is, is quite, quite different. Um, 
it's interesting and I I did enjoy watching the way she stitches but then again I do enjoy watching stitch with me's and how different people stitch and yes I am I did go all the way across and come back. I did not do one X at a time <laughs> on this. Uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting once again, but those of you who have been with me for a while know that that's my thing to experiment with different ways different ways of stitching heaven forbid that I should if I should do the same thing too many times in a row <laughs> it keeps things it keeps me from getting in a rut let me bring you down a little bit closer here because it looks to me well this color is so light so it is a little bit hard hard to see but we did this row here so that was the other thing I recently figured out and had this spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to do is um, be able to show you my screen of my pattern. Oops, clear that. Go back here. There, it's a little bit bigger. Um, that took a little bit of finagling and trial and error and challenge until I was able to uh, make that work. So that's the other thing that kind of held up my doing a video. You know, always something. I, I always am um, trying to think of how can I improve and make things more interesting for you guys you know I think it helps to um, be able to see part of the chart when I'm stitching something so that you can you know see what see what I'm doing and see does it make sense for you and um, is it something you want to try I mean, that always oh, oh, there we go. Okay. I guess there's a little bit of a lag between my uh, screen share and my Android, but that's okay. So, to answer a few of the questions I had, Julie, Julie A. asked me, is there a problem if the back of your work is bulky? And I would say 
it isn't especially a problem. I mean, a lot of people, you know, have a bulky back. Um, for me personally, where I would see it as an issue is if you, you have just an area that is really bulked up and the rest other areas are not bulky it might make things a bit bumpy when it's framed but that being said oops sorry i jiggled you out of the frame there that being said a framer can work with that by putting some extra padding between the needlework and the mounting board. And then what happens is the padding, when it's stretched, when the needlework is stretched and there's padding there, the padding kind of helps to compensate for those bulky areas. So it can be worked with. I think overall, it's not a not an issue um, because face it, in all honesty, when you think about it, heaven and earth designs or any full coverage design, especially if it's confetti heavy, there's going to be bulk. I mean, it's, it's hard to avoid a bulky, unless, unless it's like this, where it's, it's all one color and, um, You know, you can normally stitch as you normally stitch and it's not, you know, you don't, you don't have any bulk. But for the most part, okay, when I get down to that, those trees and the grass and the house and all of those things, yeah, there's going, there's going to be starts and ends and carries and all of those fun things that are going to make things somewhat bulky and that you know a lot of that is for lack of a better way to put it just the nature of the beast um i think by altering and using some of the techniques for starting and ending threads um, helps to reduce that bulk. You know, if you're gonna use, say the, we're stitching with a single strand here. So if you're gonna use that little loop method for a single strand, starting and ending, uh, where you're not, you're not running threads under existing stitches to start and end your threads. I mean, that, that can increase the bulk a little bit. Um, or, you know, using that, that loop start can help decrease the bulk a little bit because you don't have that extra layer of of thread adding you know adding bulk to your to your work um and again it's it's a lot of this is personal preference and what can you as an individual live with you know if if you're okay with it then golly there's nothing wrong with it 
nothing. I mean, really, I think don't compare. Don't compare yourself to other people. Stitch what makes you happy in a way that makes you happy and you can live with. Don't compare yourself to other people. And I think, right, there it is. Other people need to not be so, <laughs> I probably get myself in trouble for saying this, but other people need to not be so judgmental of another person's work and look at it from the point that if they're happy, that's all that matters. If you're happy with your work, that's all that matters. If another person is happy with their work, that's all that matters. Who am I? Who are, who are any of us to judge the work of another person? Unless, of course, you're entering a competition where you're putting it in to be judged. But truly, it's not, it's not up to me to judge what you stitch. So, you know, if you want to carry your thread 50 stitches away, well, so be that. You know, that's, that's, that's your choice. If you're happy, then I'm happy. You know, it's, it's, so does bulkiness matter? To an extent, however, it can be dealt with. I mean, I've seen, Oh, why is this taking so laggy? I've seen I've seen pieces that, you know, I would not be happy with. However, I'm not going to say to that person, "Oh my god, look at your back. Oh my goodness." You know, it, it it's their choice. And like I said, if it's way bulky, it can be, it can be dealt with. It can be, you know, put some padding in, oh, I forgot, I'm not loud here, thread your needle, Karen. It, um, put some padding in there that helps to absorb the bulk, even it out. Okay, and then you need to be able to, I love these ballpoint needles, and I should just get a needle threader and be done with it. But sometimes they are just a bear to thread. There we go. Ah. And I keep pushing you out of the screen here. I keep watching. So. I don't know, Julie, if that answers your question or if I just kind of went on a rant about it. <laughs> I don't know. But I hope it helps. Um, and then someone asked me, and I did not write their name down. They were looking for gridded fabric in 22 count. Because 22 counts is getting quite popular a lot of people are liking 22 count fabric um, however it does not at this point in time come 
gridded like you're 25, 28, and you know, 32, 18, 14. You know, 22 count seems to be the one that's missing as far as gridded fabric is concerned. So, as I said, I'm, I do apologize. I don't remember, I don't remember your name. Who asked me this? Um, but she said she, that she wrote Zweiger about, is there 22 count? And, you know, is it, is it available or something they would make? And Zweiger told her that no one has ever requested it. And have I seen it anywhere? No, I have not seen it anywhere. So I would suggest that if there are people out there that would like to see a 22 count in a gridded fabric, that maybe if enough people contact Zweigert about manufacturing that they would give it a go and see you know see how it goes and see if there is a demand for it um i know that there are quite a few people who enjoy stitching on 22 count i used it um for the stockings for my grandchildren you know, I gritted it myself, but that, that was okay. I was fine with that. But you can, you know, if enough, if there is enough people that are interested and there would be a demand, maybe Zweigert would consider giving it a shot and manufacture some, if for nothing more than to see, is it, is it worth it? You know, certainly they're not going to put the time, energy, and money into something that's not going to sell. But if enough people contact them and say, hey, we would really like this. Is it something that you would consider? They very well may consider that. Okay, now here is my itty little itty bitty first diagonal completed. And a lot of you ask what do I do when I get to this point on this first diagonal? A lot of you ask that question. Well, you have two choices. Okay, you can end your thread and go up here and start over. However, what I tend to do, since it is such a very short jump between here and here, it isn't a big long thread carry, I will just go back up here and start again. Now, in order to be able to catch that thread on the back and not have a long carry that doesn't get stitched over, I tend to start it over here. Because that way, instead of running up along this and potentially not getting stitched over, my thread on the back is now going this way, this way, and will definitely get stitched over. Now, the thing of it is, this thread is not going to be that long, so I may not get a whole lot of stitches done with it. And look, here I'm going to stitch backwards one at a time. I do apologize if you hear a mower. It's my husband picking up leaves. Uh, he was on this side of the house and I 
waited to start this video because he was um, right outside my porch windows. And it was super, super noisy. So I did wait a bit before I started recording because I didn't think, I really didn't think you wanted to hear all that mower noise. Oh, looks like my mail finally went. Gosh, our mail delivery has been something else here of late. Monday, and I don't believe Monday was a holiday. They never came at all. And my husband's medication was in the mail and was to be delivered on Monday. So, of course, he never got it. Tuesday, when I got my informed delivery email, it said that his medicine, they were awaiting a delivery scan and they had no idea when it was going to arrive. And I thought, oh, well, that's great. It's his medicine that he needs. That was Tuesday. So it didn't come Tuesday. Our mail, which historically has always been here before noon, our mail on Tuesday never showed up till like seven o'clock in the evening i don't know what's going on with our post office wednesday my package which had all the floss and this fabric from one two three stitch showed up okay i'm just going to Put this thread down here to be stitched over to end it. Um, my package from 123 Stitch showed up about, mm, about maybe 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. However, the rest of our mail never showed up till six o'clock in the evening. I just don't get it, people. I just don't understand. Now today, what time is it? Quarter to one. It looks like they went or else it was just the truck that delivers packages. I don't know. Our mail system, it's so screwed up. <laughs> At least here it is. It's like, oh, uh, I do the informed delivery thing so that I at least have an idea. Are we getting mail? Are we not getting mail? And I do keep track of, like if I order something online and I get the confirmation email, I don't delete that confirmation email until I actually have the package in my grubby little hand because things are just goofy these days, at, at least here. It's, it's a mess. It's a total, total mess. And if any of you are postal workers, I know that you work hard and you're doing the best you can but sometimes okay you all you know there's always a but sometimes i just have to wonder it's not always the carrier or you know the person that's actually delivering it's the whole system um <laughs> my package from one two three stitch was supposed to be here on monday 
only arrived on Wednesday because it went from one, it was mailed from one place, it went to one distribution center, it went to the second distribution center, it went back to the first distri distribution center, back to the second one, then finally it got to Pennsylvania. It's like, seriously, people? No wonder you have to ra raise postage rates because you send it back and forth to the same places before it actually gets to the right place. I had a package a couple months ago that went from somewhere southern states. It came up, it got to, I'm in Pennsylvania, so it got to Harrisburg. It went from Harrisburg to a town about 30 minutes from me, which obviously was wrong. It went back to Harrisburg. It went all the way back to its post office of origin. It came all the way back to Harrisburg and finally came to my post office. Now, how efficient is that? Not two. Not two. I and I know it. It's been screwy. It's it's not all the workers' fault. It's but I say to my husband, why don't we just privatize the postal service? Again, that's just my opinion, and I not meaning to offend anybody. It's just it's just that it's a messed up system these days and, and does need to be fixed. But at any rate, my stuff got here. My husband's medicine finally got here. So he's a happy camper. I'm a happy camper. I can stitch away on this started project. And we'll be doing a bunch of lives over the weekend because I can. So I hope you'll all join me. Uh, let's see, I had one more question. What light and magnifier do I use? I have several. <laughs> I think maybe you can see it in the background here. I have a Dazor that I use over here in my porch. And what you can see behind me is my little stitchy spot. Under my clock is where I sit. And that's my stitchy spot in my recliner with a Dazor. Um, I also have a can't remember what time this what kind this one is. I also have, I think it's a bright tech that if I'm sitting here where I am now, sometimes I will use or I will take it over into the living room if I need more magnification over there. Uh, that also has a built-in light. And right now, shining down so that I can see I have an odd light. So, yeah, I have all the gizmos, all the gadgets. So that's what I use. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you, I, I set it up, but I haven't, let me go back here. Okay. I set it up, but I, oh, golly, there we go. But I haven't really, um, done any invites to it yet or done anything, but I did start a Discord. And on my ending screen here will be the um, URL for the Discord. And I will put a link down in the Dropbox. So if any of you would like to join my Discord, please feel free to do so. Uh, that way, when I'm live streaming, we would be able to share photos of what you've been working on 
so that I and everyone else could see them. Um, there'll be a chat place in there. Um, I know several other people have discords. Uh, Stitchy Witch has one. Uh, Teresa Little Stitcher has one. Um, the people that stream on Twitch have one. I think those are the ones that I belong to. I'm trying to, that's what I can remember off the top of my head. So I did start one. If you would like to join that, you are more than welcome to. Uh, again, I will put the link down in the description box. So feel free to come and join. And then what I will do so that we can share is I will try and set up, again, this is try. <laughs> I will try to set up a screen share so that if I am doing live, we can share the Discord screen right in my live so that other people who are maybe not Discord members can see it. So I'll, I'll work on that. Um, <laughs> oh, I say that if I can accomplish it, accomplish it, it will be a great thing. But we, I will try to do that so that you can, you know, we can, if somebody's sharing a picture, we can all see it. Um, so with that, my friends, I do believe we are over an hour. So with that, I am going to call this a day and I will see you over the weekend. Uh, I'm thinking I will probably go live tomorrow evening sometime, and then we will see about Saturday and Sunday, or Saturday or Sunday. So with that, I look forward to seeing you all then, and I will say, find your joy, happy stitching, and I will see you on the live. Take care. Bye-bye.